You think you pay too much already on your property tax? Uh, I would say way too much. Well, what is your mill rate, right? Well, the state Democrats now, now, we're talking about your legislature now, okay? Because I don't want you to get confused here because your property tax is usually levied by your town council, your may, whether you have a strong mayor or a uh, town manager form of government, whichever it is. And that money stays pretty much local, right? We talked about this a little while ago. It fixes your town roads, not so much your state roads. Um, it, your your teachers, your police officers, and their equipment, and so on and so forth. Your public works department. You know, and a lot of people, you know, they feel that they're paying a little too much when it comes to property tax. But they understand that things cost money. And let's face it, you know, we like garbage pickup, for example. We like having our amenities in town. So you kind of write it off. And if you've got a mortgage, it's incorporated in your mortgage. It brings up the mortgage. Uh, you, you, what you, sh- you should be paying or what you sh- uh, would normally be paying. It elevates it to, inc- uh, to include your property tax. All right. Well, imagine this. Imagine your state legislators, your state legislature now getting in on those funds by increasing your property tax by one mill rate. Again, this is, to be clear, on top of what you're already paying your property tax. And then redistributing it to other towns. No, you heard me right. I want to be clear on something. The property tax that you presently play on, and I've and I've already give you I gave you a description of where that money goes. It stays in town. Your teachers, your police departments, your public works, your garbage pickup, your you know municipal your municipal buildings and and um, municipal employees, your plow drivers, the whole nine yards. Okay, they um, okay. So it stays your roads, your town roads. Excuse me, to be more clear, it stays in town. Okay, it's the amenities of of it's why people like to. Look at certain towns to live in, right? All right, so it stays right within in your community. Now the state legislature adding one mill and taking it for itself and redistributing it to other towns. You heard me right. Uh, good morning. It's Gary Byron here. 14 minutes after the hour of 8, our next guest into the Daily Connerton Memorial Company interview chair is a former colleague of mine in our House of Representatives. Uh, he moved on to bigger and better things. He is a state senator. Let's welcome back to the show Eric Berthel. Eric, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Uh, long time no chat. Thank you for having me on. I what missed you, bro. Well, huh? I, 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 yeah, first of all, it's great to have you back on. I've missed hearing Thank your you. voice. I'm, I'm glad you're with us. Uh, yeah, this likewise. I, I miss having you around up in the uh, under the dome as well. I appreciate and, uh, that. You're probably uh, you. <laughs> at the end of the day, I think you're having more fun than, than we are, though. <laughs> for the for the record, but uh, yeah, what a crazy what a crazy time we're living in. It doesn't. It, it just seems to continue to get crazier and crazier each year. And this cycle, uh, this new new legislative session, which we began in January, you know, as you know, we had a general election uh, in November uh, three four months ago. Was seated a new uh, new legislature, and here we are with some of the in the middle of a pandemic still, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Or maybe maybe we're getting towards the end of the pandemic, uh, God willing. But we have all of these um, these crazy ideas to uh, to tax us more, to spend more money, uh, and this on top of what what whatever might be coming to Connecticut from uh, ultimately from Washington D.C. But but this this property tax, you know, you did a great job as 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 always in explaining what what you know property tax is all about and and by the way not only do we pay property tax on <clears throat> on our homes <clears throat> excuse me but we're also paying that on on cars and trucks and whatnot that's so, right now this this new this new mill rate this new statewide one mill that uh that the democrats have proposed does not affect our cars and trucks yet um and, and i would say that that's probably something they haven't talked about and i'll put it out there as a as an idea that that might be coming too. You know, we tried to do when you were when you and I were working together. There was an attempt to do a uh, a statewide car tax as well, and to, mm-hmm. to to max it out and redistribute funds. But but this one mill proposed um, tax on homes over a certain value uh, is being called a mansion tax because if you live in a house in Connecticut, apparently that's worth more than three hundred thousand dollars. That's a mansion. I would suggest that some of the the Democrats that are proposing this should drive around and see that $300,000 doesn't necessarily buy you a lot of house. It's not a mansion necessarily. A mansion to me is, you know, 10, 12 bedrooms, lots of bathrooms and and acres and acres of land. 
right? Yeah. So, so what does this do, Gary, at the end of the day? What does it do? It takes people who are uh, trying to survive in Connecticut still, who are perhaps uh, paying their taxes, they're making, uh, making uh, uh, you know, a, a living here, they're uh, honoring their roots, their family, they've been in Connecticut for however long, and it gives them another reason gives them another reason to say, I just can't stay here anymore. And the Democrats will argue, no one's leaving. No one is leaving. They'll bang their fists on the desk and say, no one's leaving. Well, it's not true. Everyone is looking at leaving. I hear it every day. And you can see when you look at reports that come out from moving companies, people are leaving Connecticut. And the millionaires have already left. A lot of them have already left. Some of the highest taxpayers in in the state have already left. So this notion that we saw all these people come in, by the way. Oh, we saw, you know, uh, hundreds of people, 22,000 people came to Connecticut last year because they were escaping New York and New Jersey, which was arguably worse than yeah. what was going on here. Yeah, And, 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 and we saw this, this, this expansion of, of housing sales. Well, yeah, people left New York and, and New Jersey. They wanted to get out of that environment. And they came here. But when you look at the net number, people are still leaving Connecticut. And a tax like this is only going to drive more people away. Why do I have to pay a tax to the state of Connecticut on my house and and then have that money be given to somewhere else besides the town of Watertown that I live in? Eric, what I can't understand is why it's even called a mansion tax if the house is $350,000. I mean, in Connecticut... I've seen mansions. You can't get a a a three hundred thousand dollar home is an average, the average price of a home in Connecticut. That's not a not in this state. Now maybe you want to go to Wyoming, you know, and and maybe you can find a mansion out there for three hundred fifty four hundred thousand dollars. But in Connecticut, the average price of a home is about two hundred and eighty to three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's not a mansion, folks. You know, Gary, I think I saw what I what I saw from some preliminary reporting was that. That this effect, this tax would ultimately be co- collected on nearly 80 percent of the homeowners in Connecticut. So this is not, you know, a mansion tax. So that means that 80 percent of the houses in Connecticut are mansions, right? By this definition, right. now, I guess is how we have to look at it, and it's simply not true. And I, I'm going to tell you that, you know, I have a uh, I have a realtor in uh, Southbury, which is one of the one of the great towns that I represent in the 32nd district, who um, who was was very very succinct and spot on as a realtor, seeing. You know, she sees it both ways, people coming in, people leaving. But she made a very profound statement, and she said that that the added tax will simply instigate the exit of our reliable taxpayers and diminish the skill sets necessary to attract more businesses to Connecticut. Listen to that again. Wow. It'll instigate the exit of our reliable taxpayers. That's guys like you and me, perhaps, that are going to say, hey, you know what? I'm just not going to pay anymore. It's not worth it. Yeah, but Eric, okay, so that, and and that's, that's an interesting statement. And I'll agree with that. You know, I'm the middle class. I I don't know. I can't speak for you. I can't speak for anybody else. I'll speak for only myself. I'm middle class. Um, Upper middle class, maybe. I don't even know what, how to, how to differentiate. I'll just say middle class. So, but you talk to real estate agents, you talk to anybody in the real estate industry, they say they're seeing a boom that they haven't seen in 15 years. But to your point of what you just uh, stated a moment ago, we are, the middle class are being um, replaced by a wealthier, a wealthier constituency from out of state, like New York and Northern New Jersey. So yeah. maybe yeah, well, maybe I, I, the plan is to keep uh, the 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 poor and the uber rich in state and replace the middle class. Maybe Connecticut is not the place for middle class people. Well, you may, maybe you're right. And you know, Kevin Kelly, I know has been has, has spoken with you as the new minority leader uh, replaced uh, uh, the retired uh, Senator Len Fasano up in in the Republican caucus. You know, Kevin Kelly talks about that all the time. Is this is a, you know, it's a this is another tax on the middle class, and and we get to the kind of the same exact conclusion that you're coming to. It's like if we keep if we keep insulting and piling on to the middle class, maybe the middle class just disappears in Connecticut. And it's exactly what you've described. You have this this uh, this uber wealthy on one side, and then you have people who are who are living in poverty on the other side, right? And then you know, at what point does it break where where people will say? Where, where more people will say, maybe the wealthy. And again, we've already seen an exodus of some of the wealthiest people in Connecticut who've mm-hmm. said, it's not, and Gary, then it's not even a matter of them going to Florida or the Carolinas or Texas or somewhere else. 
they go to they, ironically they go to New York. Okay, they go to Massachusetts. You know, I remember when you know twenty years ago we used to call Massachusetts Taxachusetts, right? Because yeah. they had more taxes than anywhere. Well, now that, that that's our crown to wear right now. That's us. So this and state then, tax is it, where is it going though? I don't I don't I know it's going to the state, but how is the state redistributing th- th- these funds? Well, my understanding, and there's some confusion on this, and and my understanding is the way the to, to ultimately. It, to, to just get to the finish line, the money is going to end up going into into our our cities in Connecticut. Who uh, we, we know we know we have uh, we have a, an issue in our in our big cities in Connecticut, New Haven, Bridgeport, oh, the big Hartford, cities. Where, okay, yeah, the big cities where where they they're constantly you know we bailed out the city of Hartford a number of years ago with uh, you know with a, with a huge uh, huge bailout mm-hmm. uh, at the state level. There, there's a there's a significant issue that still exists. And Gary, I understand. I can fully appreciate that. You know, a city like Hartford has something like 50 percent of its property that they can't they can't collect property tax. Yeah, on they get pilot it's, money. It's, yeah. yeah, and they get and they get pilot money. And when we continue to to not properly fund pilot at the state level, then the, then, yeah, the city has to raise its taxes, raise its mill rate in order to stay afloat. But shouldn't we be looking at the at, at you know, the, the problem from. The, the the start of the issue and not saying oh well because the state doesn't fund pilot property p- properly let's go and, and charge Watertown and Newington and and all the other other towns where where they have stable financial structures in their towns let's go and charge them if their house is over three hundred thousand dollars let's charge them another another uh, uh, property tax and give that to the to the cities that's not fixing the problem that's mm. just putting another band aid on the problem it's very let's true let's get to the systemic the systemic issue here of why this is going on. Why can't the state of Connecticut properly fund pilot payments? What's going on? And then we have to really start peeling back the, the, the layers of the onion, and it really starts to get uh, stinky and painful because we know, and it's been a problem that's existed in Connecticut for, for a lot of years, for a lot of decades. Yeah. We know what the problem is. We, you know, we, we have unfunded pension liabilities. We have all of these things that we do uh, and that, that are not ever getting to, to a resolution on uh, how we can properly budget and actually move forward. And we, then, Gary, look at what's going on in some of the other committees, okay? You know, I sit on human services this year. I'm proud to be there. I was there. Proud for, to be back. Yep. Sorry. I used to sit on I sat on that uh, that committee for two terms, yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a, a lot of hard work goes on in there. But we heard testimony. Uh, we heard testimony last week on a, uh, on a bill to provide uh, Husky uh, Medicaid services to uh, to any non-documented resident, regardless of their immigration status. So we heard from the agencies, it's $195 million in year one to do this, $195 million. Department of Health said they will not support the measure unless there's additional funding that's provided because we already know what we spend. It's one of, one of the outside of pension, pension liabilities. You know, the Husky is one of the largest expenses to to the state of Connecticut, right? In terms of what we're paying for, and there's a there's a really really terrible terrible line that gets drawn here because we don't want anyone to and we and we listen for almost 13 hours to very compassionate and sad stories about people who don't have access to, to proper health care. Okay? We get it, we get it. We, no one should be in that situation. But going and saying we're just going to throw the gates open and allow anyone, regardless of their their immigration status, to be able to come and and have health care is not the way to fix this. No. And it's not the way to fix it at almost two hundred million dollars. And that's based on what we think we know are the number of uh, residents in Connecticut who are who are undocumented at this point. No. You know, uh, four hundred and thirty million dollars in, in proposed in new education spending in the education committee. Okay, I mean, right there, you've got almost, you know, you've got you've got six hundred million dollars potentially, almost seven hundred million dollars in new spending. Where is the money going to come from? Where does it come from? And why are we not looking at this and saying, you know what, we really can't afford to do this. Let's try to fix what we've got now with within the within the resources and the means that we have now. That's how you properly budget. You know, you look at what you've got and you try to do things within the means that you that, that are existing. You and I fought for that together when we work together i continue to fight for that up there in being uh being you know, reasonable and responsible instead of constantly trying to generate new ways to uh to create new ways to generate revenue it has to stop because it's an assault on the middle class to get back to where we started uh, a, a one mil tax on on a three hundred thousand dollar house is not a lot of money 
when you look at it. It's not. It's not a lot of money they, from one person's house. But it starts at one mill, and then is it five mills now? Is by, it by does, is it is commercial? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Eric. Is, is commercial property included in this? Uh, I believe. Uh, you know what? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. I think it. I think. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't know, Gary. We'll have to find out and, and circle back. Yeah, I, I would be. In, I'd be very interested. I know that real estate agents are weighing in against uh, the Democrat leader Malo- uh, uh, Looney and and. Um, I, I don't. And Matt Ritter, yeah, yeah, and Matt Ritter, exactly. Uh, I just wanted to know if uh, what you're hearing is it's going to occur at this public hearing. It's today, right at nine a.m. Yes, it is today. There's a lot of a uh, lot of public hearings going on today, and you know it, it's that time of the year. We're in the in the the three the three weeks or so in March and into early April where uh, where all those public hearings are are occurring. And and by the way, uh, yes, it, it is occurring. Uh, I think it's at nine. It's either at nine or ten, but. Uh, you know, I, and I encourage people, despite the fact, uh, just to give a little, a little uh, a pump to, to good uh, civic behavior, right? Please, just because we're on a Zoom mode for, uh, for public testimony, it's a little, it's a little tiring because you have to wait. It's no different than being up in Hartford, except that you're in your living room or your den or wherever you might Zoom from. But. Uh, but everyone gets heard, and I've been on on a number of public hearings as a uh, as a legislator in the last couple of weeks that have gone 12, you know, 13, 14 hours. Everyone gets heard, and right. uh, and again, it, it it does require a couple of different steps. It's not just driving to Hartford and uh, and signing up on the sign up sheet outside of the the meeting room. You actually have to do that in advance. But, I just but, found out. I'm sorry, our producer Ryan just uh, discovered that it does also apply to uh, commercial businesses. It does. Yeah, okay. I, I can't imagine. You know, these small business operators who've been taking it on the chin for now over a year. Uh, yeah. You know, with, yeah. with uh, closing their, they're minimizing their hours. Some of businesses have not even made it; they've closed down. Particularly, these mom and pops who don't have the infrastructure. Um, you know, to, to keep the, to sustain, you know, their, them being in business, um, during a pandemic, you know, um, yet again, they're taking it on the chin here with, uh, because you know, the landlord is just going to pass that along, uh, to, to their tenants, to their commercial tenants. Gary, this is no different. It's no different than, than a prior conversation that you and I have had regarding, regarding tolls, right? Last year and two years ago when this was all the rage talking about tolls. Anything that we do, yeah. anything that the legislature does that increases the cost of, 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 of living in Connecticut, right? Whether it's a, a toll, whether it's a, a one mil tax on my house, drives up the cost of everything in Connecticut. Yeah. Because as you just said, it ultimately gets that cost ultimately gets passed on to uh, oh, yeah. onto the consumer uh, mileage or taxes the, the business. all of that. Jay Case, by the way, says good morning, and Robert on Facebook says good morning, Eric. Keep up the good work, my friend. So you got well, thank uh, you. I appreciate that. We're we're you know we're not looking, Gary, as you know, we're not looking to have an argument just for the purpose of having an argument. We're trying to protect the middle class. We're trying to bring common sense thinking. To, to the discussion in Hartford. This is not a matter of, I know. it should never be a matter of us against No, them. no, no. It's, 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 it's a difference you know? of uh, philosophical ideologies as well. All right, Eric, I'm out of time. Our state senator, Eric Berthel, listen, I appreciate you being with us. we got to have you back more often. How's that? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. You Stay got well. it. Good luck with the hearings today. Coming right Thanks. back to your phone calls. Stay with us. Ways in. On- 